in soft computing one another important paradigm of computing is artificial neural network. So, in this lecture we will introduce the concept of artificial neural network and its uses to solve many problems in different applications. So, we know the human is the best creature in this universe and the main things that is intrinsic in the human is basically its brain. Brain is also called central nervous system. Due to this very unique characteristics of the brain human can do many things. Human can remember, human can reason out, human can prove theorem, human can solve many problems, human can see the world, recognize the things and many more. So, behind all these the out performance compared to the other living things in this world, the human play, brain plays an important role. Now, as the brain it is called so central nervous system uh, ok biologically it looks like a gray matter. So, that is why sometimes in medical science brain is called the gray matters. Now, in this gray matters there are lot of other brain cells are there and any things from any part of the brain is basically controlled by this central nervous system. So, this is this, this is why this brain is also called the head office of our body. Now, today we will see exactly how this brain is composed of and how this brain works and then how the same thing can be mimicked to solve our problem in an artificial manner. So, the artificial neural uh, network. Now, so in, ca in the brain in fact there is a large collection of brain cells as I told you this brain cells is basically the atomic level the processing units and more precisely this atomic units is called neuron. Each neuron is approximately 10 micron in length and these are the unique neurons which basically are the fundamental things of any uh, what is called the uh, uh, sense processing. Typically within a human brain there is around 10 to the power 11 number of neurons and these neurons are basically stay there in a connected manner or we can say in a network manner and in this network all these neurons are the unit which basically carry certain pulses. This pulses is basically same as the electrical pulses. So, it is also in many way similar the way how the current flows from one source to another destination. So, these neurons are the, the cells which basically propagate the electrical pulses from any part of our body to the central nervous system and vice versa. So, these neurons are the important things and we will see exactly how a neuron look like. So, in these slides we see one neuron and if we see these slides then we can understand it has three different part. So, this is the first part, this is the second and this is the third part. Now, this part is called the head of the neuron. Now, so in this part one is a elongated or is a soiled portion is called the cell body of the neuron and it is called the soma and in this soma there is a core. This core is not exactly the nucleus as it is there in the body cell and now in this soma there will be hairy like connections these are called dendrite 
dendrite is a very small thin hair like organs or parts. And then the next part it is basically end or tail of the neuron it is called the it is called the synapses. So, basically the synapses is one part where it basically meets with other dendrites of other neuron. So, it is basically a junction point of meeting other neuron. So, other neuron. So, it is a junction point. So, that is why synapse is also called junction point. Now, between this soma and synapse there is a connectivity this connectivity is called the action. So, this way the neuron are constructed. Now, this neuron just like a body cell it is also a cell it is a living cell and the important difference between the other body cell than this nerve cell is that the other body cell can go cell division whereas, the neuron cannot go cell division. This means that at the time of birth a person having number of neurons can never be increased and also if some neurons are damaged or destroyed it cannot be reproduced like unlike the body cell if there is a cut or wound it will be healed and then some new cells will grow to fill the wound or heal. So, this is the difference between these cells and functionally there are many difference between these neurons and the simple body cells. Okay, so, we will learn about the neuron. So, neuron is look like this and now let us see how this neuron uh, is basically uh, work there. Now, as okay, this is a very schematic of a biological neuron and the different parts that just now we have discussed about. So, different part means the dendrite, the action, soma and synapse and here uh, the signal, signal will flow from dendrite to action that means from one neuron to the next neuron. So, this way the signal can propagate it in a one direction. So, if so there is a basically connection from every points in our body to the brain and that is the network is there and for building such a network the basic unit is basically this neuron. Okay, so, this is the neuron there now here one question that arises is that how the signals flow from one cell to another cell. Now, in every neuron there is one sort of fluid is there those fluids are called neurotransmitter that means, the, the body of a neuron is filled with this liquid it is a neurotransmitter. Now, a signal whenever it is created this causes some what is called the different level of concentration. So, for this liquid neurotransmitter is concerned for example, if a mosquito bites then the at the point where the mosquito bites at that point a signal is created. This signal is basically is it created means it basically creates a different level of what is called the neurotransmission concentration. Now, this neurotransmitter is basically is a solution sort of thing we can uh, in a simple manner we can say is a uh, some concentration of some cation like Na, sodium, calcium, magnesium all these things are there. So, these are the basically is, is, uh, ion concentration. So, whenever a signal or some uh, event occurs then there is a change in this concentration level of these ions as a result some voltage will be developed and due to this voltage this signal will propagate from one neuron to next neuron. So, this is nothing but an imp just like uh, is uh, an electrical impulse and this electrical impulse whenever it is created in a neuron last only for few uh, seconds it is not few seconds rather it is for a few milliseconds that mean whenever that ion concentration different occurs it will persist only for few milliseconds after that again concentration will be balanced and there will be no signal or no 
pulses and so so this way the signals are created and once the signals are created signals will be propagated from one neuron to another neuron now in this context one thing we should note that all signals cannot be propagated from one neuron to another neuron a signals which has certain what is called the strength more than a threshold value only can be transmitted from one neuron to another neuron if the signal strength is less than this threshold value the signal will not be transmitted from one signal to another signal and another th another uh, from one neuron to another neuron and another important thing is that to a neuron the signal can arrives through the different dendrites and so many signals whenever coming from the different neurons to a particular neuron are summed up summed up at the soma and then summed up signal is basically propagated via axon through the synapse to other neuron so these are the things that happens in our uh, biological neurons and uh, this idea is enough to understand how these things can be considered to solve many problems now okay see these pictures here how the signals can be so here basically one <coughs> so here basically uh, some event occurs so this basically uh, produce some what is called the electrical pulses will be flow there come here and then go there this way it will flow and the signal which is produced here right uh, because okay i told you one uh, point here but in this point the number of neurons are in fact located so so the the point where the neurons are located they will receive this pulse and then pass to this um, what is called the neuron and then summed up here and when this signal strength is greater than a threshold value will be passed to this synapse and then from there it will go to the other neuron so this way the signal propagation takes place in our neuron now so this is the idea that is uh, what is called the bio biological neuron in fact the human brain is basically is a very complex structures and it can be viewed as a massive highly interconnected network of these neurons so gray matter that we just have now learned about it it is basically nothing but a collection of neurons as i told you it is around 10 to the power 11 neurons the people who are having more neurons they have the more processing or computing capabilities thinking capabilities they are great scientists like albert einstein now this artificial neural networks is basically is a mimic is a simulation of the biological neural network which is there and the artificial neuron is called a perceptron so in many book you can see it is called it is termed as perceptron so neuron or artificial neural network is basically is the basic units which can solve many problems now let us see how we can mimic this biological neuron to our artificial neural uh, neuron or it is called the perceptron now here we can see the two uh, this figure can uh, can be considered in a two parts in this first part we can see it is basically the figure of a biological neuron and the second part of this figure is basically so the artificial neuron that is the perceptron now here if we can see the input here in this artificial neural network x1 x2 dot dot xn are the input to the perceptron and all the input come to this part it is called the summation unit it is basically same as the input from the different part it is coming like x1 x2 x3 x4 and coming to this part and this is the summation unit and another important thing that we can note it here is that whenever the signal is coming here it basically come with some weight w1 w2 w3 w4 it is like this so similarly it is here also the signal that is coming here with certain weights weights is basically indicates that how the signal is significant to this neuron so basically all signals those are coming they are called the weighted signal 
Now, when the weighted signal comes into this summation unit, basically all the signals and multiplied by their weights are summed up here and then total summation of this strength will be passed through this. This is just like a action, this is just like a action and then come to this point and this point basically. Now, the signals which are summed up here comes to this point, this point is basically same as the synapse or junction, it basically connection to other neuron. Now, here the signals which are which are arrived here right will be check that whether the signal strength is greater than the threshold value or not. If the signal strength is greater than the threshold value that signal will pass to further, but if it is less than then it will not pass. So, so this way we can say this part is same as this part and this part is same as this part and this part is this one. Now, so this is the biological neuron and this is the artificial neural ne neuron and we can see that how this biological neuron works it can be considered to work here. And basically writing so far the program that means computation is concerned it has two computation. So, input is there and output is there as you know in every computation the input and output is there and this is a system which basically mapped given an input to a output and the as a mapping. So, there are two mapping functions or simple functions are there one function is basically take all these inputs and their weights and the simple function that it will calculate is called the sum, summation of products of all weights and their inputs that means x1 w1, x2 w2, x3 w3 and then sum of all these values. So, a simple program that can be written which take input x1 and w1, x2 and w2 and produce x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus dot 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 xn wn. So, this kind of so this is basically computation that can takes place here in this part a simple program with a simple loop can be right. And then here one another program we can think about whenever it receive this input that means this is the sum of all the inputs it is there it will check with respect to some threshold value. If the input this sum is greater than the threshold value then it will pass. So, it is basically one if then command is there a very simple code is there. So, what I can understand is that the way this biological neuron works we can write a simple program to mimic the working of the biological neuron by means of a perceptron. So, this is the idea the way the signal is work. Now, few things are very much pertinent so far this perceptron and our biological neuron is concerned. Uh, so, as I told you a neuron is a basic unit and it works as an interconnected form. So, it is basically network. So, that is why it is called a network of neurons and this network of neurons computes the input signals. If you pass any signals as an input to this system it will computes the signal and it can has the proper uh, characteristic to transport the signals at a very very high speed. And in addition to this uh, uh, what is called the working of these signals few things are very important is that it can store information, it can perceive and also it can learn automatically. So, these are the concept that is there and we will see how our, our artificial neural network the way the biological uh, system works is also can be implemented and it basically give rise to the basic uh, one important theory in the soft computing artificial neural network. Uh, so, this is the idea about uh, so far the artificial neural network is concerned and as I told you that this work has certain computation per thing. So, input weight are the input and weight are the uh, input and weight are the in, uh, input to the things and this is the one module or one function another function is output is there. So, so this way this neuron, syst neuron system will work for us and now let us see how this neural networks is basically um, solve many problems uh, right there. Now, here exactly again I just want to repeat the same thing, uh, but in a different way. So, if this is the input 
like this is the input to the system then it produce the output by means of this program. So, i is the here this i pass to the air and here basically one function this function we call transferring function or transfer function this function is phi and for this function i is the input and y is the output. So, this is the transfer function right. So, that this i uh, so this function transfer function takes this i as an input and then produce the output. Now, again so this actually we can write y is a function of i or it is phi of i like ok. As you know uh, we have mentioned at the very beginning of this course any system has the antecedent and then consequence. So, it is antecedents and consequence it basically maps uh, input to output. So, mapping. So, this way we can understand that this neuron or is a perceptron rather how map and input to an output. Now, again in this processing one important thing that is there is called the transfer function. Now, we have to learn about the transfer functions and what is the meaning of this one here. Now, there are in fact many many transfer functions known sometimes all this transfer function is also called thresholding function. We usually denote this transfer function as phi. Now, uh, all these transfer functions is basically compare the input i with respect to some threshold value. We denote this threshold value as theta. Now, the, the way e this transfer function works is basically is a rule that means, if the value of i greater than theta then the output is 1 else the output is 0. Now, we learn that the output of a neuron is either 1 or 0. It is not necessarily that always 1 or 0 sometimes some other value also can be considered for, but for the sake of simplicity in calculation usually these two outputs are there. So, 1 and 0. So, that means, y has the value either 1 and 0. So, this phi returns either 1 and 0 and this is the rule that it follows if i greater than th theta then the function phi i returns 1 if less than or equal to theta is 0. So, this is one transfer function that we have discussed and it follows the rule like this and if a transfer function follows this kind of simple concept then it is called a step function. Also alternatively this function is called heavy side function. Now, so we have learned about the basic or simple transfer function that is there in uh, in the theory of artificial neural network. Sometime this ten uh, this step function is also called hard limit transfer function. Other than this hard limit transfer function, there is another function also known. It is called the linear uh, transfer function. Now here is the picture basically shows how the hard limit transfer function works and here is the uh, signum transfer function or linear transfer function. Now, in this case I can see that we, we see that uh, if the input is within this range then this function phi i return 0 and if the input is beyond this range then output that uh, the function that returns is 1. Now, this is the hard limit transfer function on the other hand signum transfer function so, it is basically if the input within this range it return minus 1 and beyond this range it will return 1. So, here in this case the output is minus 1 or plus 1. So, this is another one. So, minus 1 also can be considered as 0 and this plus 1 also can be considered 1 if it is normalized to that one. So, anyway so, so signal transform function usually uh, minus 1 and 1 hard limit transfer function 1 and 0 although minus 1 to 0 2 levels. So, 2 levels can be denoted by 0 and 1 also. So, these are the two functions are there in addition to these two transfer function there are few more transfer functions are very important. These transfer functions are called sigmoid transfer function. The sigmoid transfer function has two versions one is called log sigmoid function which basically take this form and another is tan sigmoid function which basically take this form. 
Now, it apparently um, seems that these two term functions are very difficult to compute, but there is a computation tricks by which all these calculation can be computed very efficiently that we will discuss when we will consider the application of the neurons to solve problems. Anyway, so we have learned few transfer functions which are very popular in the theory of neural network. Now, after learning this transfer function, uh, so this is a graph actually. So, this graph basically shows how the transfer function that we have discussed just now log sigmoid and tan sigmoid works is there and here the different values alpha can be decided if alpha equals to 0 this basically same as the sigmoid function that we have discussed. If alpha value is 1.0 or 10 the sigmoid function will be like this. So, for the different value of uh, this one the sigmoid function will take place like that. Now, the same thing is applicable to the tan sigmoid transfer function. So, here the alpha uh, one important uh, parameters right which basically decides how the transfer functions will behave. Now, okay, so these are the transfer functions. Now, so far the ANN is concerned uh, why we should follow this ANN or the artificial neural network to solve our problem. This is because it has very nice mapping capabilities that means any input if it gives to you it can map to any in output and that is uh, with a very faster rate. So, that is why any input can be if it is a pattern then it can rate result the corresponding output patterns very effectively. And another important thing is that so far this neural network is concerned whatever the different parameters that we have mentioned the different parameters means the transfer function the different parameter means alpha in the transfer function or the uh, number of units or weights in the neuron all these are the parameters basically which characterized a behavior of a neuron. Now, if we uh, can decide the values of this neuron then it is enough that the neuron can work for you. Now, again these values the all these weights transfer function the threshold values everything can be learned automatically if you train the neuron. Now, we will discuss about how all these parameters ca can be learned automatically. Now, this is the one capability that the neurons are having that means, automatically it can learn its value and therefore, solve the problem. So, learning and everything will be discussed shortly then we will be able to follow this concept. So, this is the advantage and another advantage is that very much robust fault tolerant therefore, it can recall full patterns for incomplete partial or noisy uh, inputs. ANN can be used to process the information in parallel at a very high speed and in a distributed manner. This is why this neural systems is effective for parallel distributed processing and we can solve any problems which cannot be solved using the single processing methods. So, this is the advantage that the neural uh, artificial neural network is having. Now, so we have learned about the idea about the basic units which is there in artificial neural network and in the next lecture we will learn about how this neuron can be trained to solve or learn itself for the different values in it. Thank you.